So I think the change that's happening is incredible, which then will lead into growth. Yep. But growth will be at a speed that we haven't seen before. There's a reason why four out of five businesses fail mm. in the first five years, and it's because they lack... Welcome back everyone to a truly special episode of The Growth Distillery here at the AANA where we are resetting for growth. Uh, I'm joined by a woman that needs no introduction but deserves the respect of one, so I'm going to give it a stab here. But Janine, Alice, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Uh, Janine is the founder of the iconic Boost Juice brand and company. She is also the founder of the Business Academy, which I think is doing phenomenal work uh, for upcoming professionals and leaders and executives. Uh, Janine is one of the most awarded and most respected women in business across the country. A prolific entrepreneur has been a shark on Australia's Shark Tank. Firstly, where do you find the time? But secondly, thank you so much for coming and joining us. Pleasure. Um, so we're here talking about all things growth, uh, yes. in particular the resets that are going to take us through the next chapter of what I think is about to play out across the country uh, and globally. Um, I would love to get your perspective on what you believe the essential ingredients for growth are and, and has that changed for you over the last yeah. decade? It's really interesting, you know. So we were talking 22 years ago, right? Yeah. Um, and we were sitting down about growth and, and 22 years ago, the internet was this this thing that used to be on a phone and it would barely, and there was nothing on it and it was slow and everything was about yellow pages. You look at where things are going with regard to change and it's changing at a speed that we've never seen before. Mm. So basically when I started business, business hadn't really changed, mm. right? You could probably do the same thing and, and nothing really changes. Yep. In the last 23 years, and I was always an early adopter because I, if anything I could find to make my life easier, great. I now look at where we are now in the last five years, whether it's social media or internet. I now look at AI. Mm. So I think the change that's happening is incredible, which then will lead into growth. Yep. But growth will be at a speed that we haven't seen before. Mm. And I think that is um, super exciting and super scary mm. because growing quickly can also mean you fail quickly. Mm. So it is going to be a really interesting space. What do you think is going to separate the wheat from the chaff in terms of harnessing what is, as you said, a, like a double-edged sword, right? It, yeah. It's equally easy to grow yourself to death. Oh, no, uh, no, no, totally. Look, this, the same thing that separates the wheat from the chaff 20 years ago is the same today, is the same will be 20 years ago in, mm. in 20 years' time. And that is, you've, it's that grit. Mm -hmm. It's that grit to just keep going when everyone else gives up. It's that one that go, that one that sort of I talked about on the stage. That this is a bit the, there's verbs and saws. The people who are just going, I have a, I will find a solution to every problem. Mm. I will take ownership for this whole project and I will make it happen. Yeah. It's the people that, if they're climbing Everest. They go to the top. They don't stop at base count and go, it's too hard. Mm. There's a reason why four out of five businesses fail mm. in the first five years and it's because they lack grit. I think that's a phenomenally accurate statement and I think that grit's becoming harder, particularly in younger, you know, younger professionals, younger practitioners. We're seeing this play out um, where we haven't cultivated that, that resolve yeah. in, in, in our younger practitioners. How do you go about fostering that and cultivating that in the team's in the businesses that you've got. Yeah. Look, it's it's nearly innate. You okay. Know, yeah. It starts with hiring. <laughs> yeah, look, it does. It does. You know, yeah. you look at um, what Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, where he talks about get the right people on the bus, right? Yeah. That's It has to be that, right? To be honest, if someone is um, from a rural area, hmm. I'll make sure I always interview them. Interesting. Right? Because they seem to have a little bit more, um, not entitlement, but they've tried it. It's a bit harder for them, yeah. so they have that. Um Quite often, sometimes overseas people, you know, uh, refugees, yep. you know, incredibly talented, you know. But it doesn't mean that the Australians haven't got grit too. There is, is people in there that has that grit. But I saw a study recently that talked about the fact that we are the probably the – myself and I would say probably myself is probably the first generation where grit hasn't been forced upon us. Mm. So if you think about people going through World War One, World War Two, yeah. um, you know, they had people come – my grandmother told me that you'd see the postman and just hope he didn't come to your house. Mm. You know, you had men going – like men going to war. It was yeah, – We was, don't know strife. We don't know yeah. strife. And people say that – they actually talked about this article, which I thought was fascinating, was 
your level of grit on understanding what's hard is based on the hardest thing that's ever happened to you. And quite often in the world that we live in, in Australia, because you look, you only have to look, turn on the news and see what's happening in you know, Gaza and Ukraine and everywhere, that there is people who are finding it as hard as they've ever had in the history of human mm. species. But Australia, we got the DNA lottery. Yeah. Bad shit happens to people, but as a race, mm. we have had prosperity. Mm. We no one. We're in a society that no one starves. Mm. Like it is. We don't have to walk to a river to get water no. to then have to clean it. Or put yeah. our rubbish in there. You know, yeah. I'm part of the um, UNHCR, which mm. is which is for refugees. The it is a, a horrific the stories that are happening all over yeah. the world, and then you come back to Australia and go, we have nothing to complain about. Yeah. You know, so we cut you off in the traffic. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so going back to your question about grit, I think, um, you know, not everyone's had this, you know, ha- not that you have to have a bad life to have grit, like you, you don't, but I do think that there's that that um, determination in people that can be taught, and but people have to find their passion. Mm. Often grit comes with, I want it. It's yeah. like it's that real passion. What a brilliant answer. I love that answer. What's the other side of the coin? What's the reset we all need that's hiding in plain sight? The thing that we're all focused or fixated on that's just baggage holding us down? I think we get in our own way mentally. Ooh, okay. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, the, the baggage that we have in our life is, is what we have in our head. Yeah. I'll, give, I'll give you an example. When I was going to Survivor, um, I got this guy called Paul Table who works in my mapping. Yeah. And he gave me this theory, which I thought was a really good theory, okay. right? He said, you have two people on your shoulder, right? Name them, right? Right, okay, I'll name this girl here. Her name is Debbie, Debbie Downer, right? (laughs) Sorry for all the Debbies out there, right? And the other one, her name's Igora. And when Debbie Downer says to me, it's too cold to go for a surf, don't get on the yoga mat, you're not good enough, Uh, you'll fail in business, you'll lose your house, you'll do all this sort of stuff. When she's doing that, you actually have to recognise and actually change the way you think, Mm. right? And now I honestly... If I'm going on stage or if I'm going into a meeting that I need some grit mm. or if I'm going into the surf with big waves, I'll speak to Agora and say, mate, I need a little help here, yeah. right? And what it does is it makes you stand up. You know, like do the – not that you do the Superman pose, but you know when yeah, you saw that yeah. Superman yeah. pose? It's actually a mindsetting. And so I thought that was a really cute way of um, changing the way you think and – and sometimes tapping into um, the agoras of your world. Yeah. And I don't know about you, right, but I do believe in the parking ferry. Ooh, okay. Do you know what the parking My ferry is? My wife is an avid believer of the right? parking ferry. So her and I, so the power of the parking ferry wins. Yeah. And yeah. does she get parks? Uncomfortably often. Yes, so <laughs> yeah. do I. That's what my husband says yeah. to me. Um, so look, you, you are a prolific investor. I, I'm fascinated to understand, you know, I presume that in the businesses that you've had to grow, the businesses you've had to invest in, that there's been a a through vein of really challenging convention and really, to your point, drawing on that grit to push things beyond the boundaries of of our current frame of reference. What have been your philosophies to to stress test that as a capability within the the teams and the businesses you invest in? And and even in, you know, if if someone's tuning into this now and going, you know what, this is something I want to draw into, but mm. I've got a board that's just not going to buy what I'm selling, or I've got a leader that's just not going to, not going to have that um, that appetite for risk or appetite for yeah. grit. What advice would you give them? Look, you've got to take people on the journey. Okay. Right. So if you um, if you have an idea that you think is the most amazing idea on the planet, mm. if the CEO, CEO or the board aren't into it doesn't go anywhere yeah. right equally if the ceo has a really good idea and wants to make a change and he hasn't got the buy-in from the team it won't go anywhere mm. so you have to actually make sure that everyone understands and everyone's got buy-in to the vision mm. so that gets down to communication mm. in and leadership and passion and yeah. getting people to go yeah i can see it yeah i believe in it if we stuff it up no problems we'll we'll have safeguards along the way but mm. um it is really that belief and that ability to sell in your vision mm. and have tangible outcomes of what success look like mm. that makes a difference. Is it possible in your mind to really reset the thinking of a board or reset the thinking of someone that has entrenched beliefs? Yeah. It gets down to confidence. Okay. Right? So if the board has confidence in the CEO, they'll let them do anything. Yeah. And success success breeds confidence. 
right? So if there's a failure and the board's going, oh, we don't know quite sure if we're going to trust you again. I mean, look at Steve Jobs, right? Mm. He, yeah. he got kicked out of his business, yeah. right? When when he was like, "This, let's do this, let's do this," and they went, "We no longer have faith in you. You've mm. you know, you've gone down these rabbit holes and they haven't worked. We no longer have faith." And there's many examples like that. All mm. you have to do is pick up any of those books from any major brands and read the stories. And there's always stories where people have failed and then they've lost confidence. Mm. So it's that sort of ability to be able to fail, mm. but fail, um, fail, and still keep that support. Because you would imagine, you know, given what you were saying at the very beginning around the rate of change and the rate of disruption, that failure is going to have a bigger role to play in the success of businesses going forward, mm. right? What's been your philosophy around failure? Um, look, how has that underpinned growth of, look, of your businesses? Look, it's, it's really interesting because people say to me, Janine, can you tell me all the things that went wrong, right? Mm. And I go, Jesus Christ, there's so many, but I couldn't even bring one up. And mm. the reason I couldn't bring one up is not because of where things went wrong. They went wrong all the time. Is that every single thing that went wrong actually dictated who, where the business is and where I am today. Mm. So it's like um, George Clooney of all people said, um, no one learned anything from winning. Mm. You actually only lose, you only learn anything from losing mm. because then also losing hurts yeah. too, you know. So in the room today, it was like, okay, you, know, you very kindly said your team thought my, my presentation was was good. But if there was five people that thought didn't think, it was like, what can I do better? Yeah, they're the right? ones to speak to. Yeah, yeah, you know, so it's um it's the learnings that you try and take from all the mm. things that have gone wrong and even in my life right and we talk about grit like all of us have had stuff in our lives that probably wasn't the best that possibly mm. can go and again I wouldn't change one thing because it's formed the way I think that's formed the way I view the world mm. and I also believe um we also evolve every seven years mm. so if you even look at your life you know, there was a time when you were a young kid, then you were in university, then you were probably traveling and then you were doing this career and mm. your life is in these seven year or six year clumps mm. and they're nearly like unrecognizable, the lives that yeah, you have. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And then you have kids and everything just gets washed away. I know, that's another seven years <laughs> yeah. of, oh my God, Jesus, um, I have no sleep. But I, I can imagine that from a position of, of decisioning authority, failing fast and learning quick is a is a real luxury that we that you and I get to have. How might we cultivate that, 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 you know, that ability to, to fail and to learn and to reframe the risk associated with it in people that are junior that, that are going to set up yeah. our businesses for success. But it's the leaders that actually have to embrace that. Yeah. I think the last, um, the last rocket that blew up from, from Elon Musk, mm. he went out and said, it was a fantastic result and I'll tell you why. Um, it's the Irish wake. Mm. You know, it's actually going, yeah. okay, so we gave that a go, didn't work. Let's sit down and let's pick it apart and look at, let's, what did we like? There might have been some wins in there. Mm. Let's not throw the whole baby out with the bathwater, yeah. but let's look at what we can learn from it. So having that, that view of even going into an idea, and that's probably the best thing, you go, all right, guys, you, know, you don't want to talk about the failure of it, but mm. you know what, go hard or go home. Mm. Right, and it, sometimes it will work, and sometimes it, you know, it won't. And when and when it doesn't go the way that you want, still lead loudly. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Last one from me before I let you back. Um, if you could go back to yourself and have a chat twenty years ago, yep, and reset your thinking or your mental model on one big thing, knowing what you know now, given all of the success that mm. you've had, what would it be, and why would that be the one thing? I would go up to myself. I would pat myself on the back and say, "Go for it." And I wouldn't say anything else because Ooh. she had to go through all the steps that she did to learn what she needed to learn to be the person she was or she is. And, you know, there is there is all sorts of stuff that you get wrong, right? You're, you're with the wrong partner. You, you make the wrong decision. You could be a kind of person. You could – like there's a hundred things that you could do differently. But the one thing I would just say is I would just, you know, pat her on the back and wish her luck. That is the best non-answer I have heard today. <laughs> <laughs> Janine, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure talking to no, you. No, my pleasure.